Hello everyone, so here I have a power resistor. So what's a power resistor? Well, it's a resistor whose special purpose is to dissipate energy um, and of course in the form of heat. So why would you want to do that? Well, usually you'd want to do that when you're trying to discharge a cell and you might want to discharge a cell so that you can find its capacity. So if you were to discharge a cell at a known amount of uh, wattage and a known amount of time, you could therefore know a cell's capacity. Okay, so anyway, that's what you could use um, power resistor for. So, um, what are these numbers here, and um, you know what does this mean? Well, the first number it says 100 watts, and that's because this can dissipate 100 watts of heat without destroying itself. And what are these other numbers here? Um, 1 ohm and J. So 1 ohm is its resistance of course and J is the tolerance of that resistance. So if this is 1 ohm then J means 5% so it's 1 ohm give or take 5%. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to discharge a cell and I'm going to show you it discharging and I'm going to show you more importantly the calculations that uh, sort of revolve around that. Okay, but the first thing I'm going to do is show you the resistance of this cell. So I'll just zoom out. Sorry, the resistance of the resistor. Just zoom out a bit. And let's set this to 200 ohms maximum. And you should find that the resistance will be um, 1 ohm, give or take 5%. So 1.05 ohms to 0 0.95 ohms. And it is 1.3 ohms, uh, 1.2 ohms. That's terrible. Um, in the UK, well, I've actually bought this from the UK, but um, well, via China, of course, um, through eBay. But um, that's actually illegal to sell in the UK because um, it's missold. Because J means five percent, and um, 1.2 ohms is not five percent. That's twenty percent. So yeah. Um, that's not really that good, but, um, but anyway, not to worry, let's get on with the project. Um, so 1.2 ohms, I'll just move this out of the way. So we're going to use this to um, to discharge a cell, and this is the cell I'm going to discharge. So I just need to find the voltage of this cell. It will probably be about 3.8 volts, or thereabout. And it is 3.9. Okay, so it's 3.9 volts. So um, I'll just start drawing a diagram now. I'm going to draw Ohm's triangle. E I Ah, so E, which means voltage, is 3.9 volts. Now R, we know R, um, it's 1.2 ohms. So we've got 3.9 volts, 1.2 ohms, and we could do with finding out the current, and that's easy. We can do that because we know the voltage and because we know the uh, resistance of the circuit, we can find out the current. So if we get the voltage and divide that by the resistance, so 3.9 divided by 1.2, 3.25, so 3.25 amps, 3.25 amps. Now, theoretically, this is all correct. So if we were to connect this to this, we'd start energy passing through the cell, through the resistor, and then back, uh, well, electrons anyway, um, and therefore we'd start wasting heat. So how much heat would we waste? Well, that's easy, because watts equals current multiplied by voltage. So um, E multiplied by I equals watts. 12.7 watts. 12.7 watts. 
So here we go. So if we were to connect these up now, we'd use up 12.7 watts. Uh, that's how much heat we'd uh, waste potentially. And uh, you can see here that this is rated for up to 100 watts. So we're fine using this resistor. Now if we were to dissipate uh, say 200 watts and this is rated at 100 watts we'd have a problem. This would overheat and it would probably, um, it'd probably be destroyed. So, um, right, so theoretically we've got the calculations and we're good to go. But there's something uh, quite important which we've missed. And that is um, in the UK it's called voltage dip or in the US I believe it's called voltage sag. And um, what that is, it's when you uh, connect up a circuit and there's a heavy load on the uh, power supply, the voltage sags, it dips down. And um, we need to be aware of that. So, um, let's just check out the voltage, uh, including the sag. So, I'll just connect this up. See, um, we expect 3.9 volts, but it's going to be less. So, I'll just connect this up. Anode to the anode. And cathode to the cathode. And the actual voltage is 2.75. So, 2.75. That's quite a drop. So, 2.75 volts. So now um, the resistance is not going to change and we know what the voltage is to start with after the dip. So if we recalculate that now to get the uh, current again 2.75 divided by 1.2 equals 2.3 so amperage should be 2.3 amps. That's what it should be after the sag or the dip. And now if we want to rework out wattage again, we know it's going to be lower of course. 2.75 multiplied by 2.3. So I'll calculate that. Um, 2.3 multiplied by 2.75 equals... 6.3, so that's 6.3 watts, 6.3 watts, so they are our reliable uh, calculations. So now um, what I'll do is I'll connect the circuit up but I'll wire in an amp meter, which is my voltmeter actually, my multimeter, and we should see that 2.3 amps should be flowing across the circuit. 2.3 amps. And um, you can see there that it isn't perfect. Okay, so the amount of current that's flowing through here is going down and down and down. And the voltage will be dropping as well. Okay, so I'll just take that off. Uh, you can see it wasn't far off really, 2.3 amps. So that's how much current roughly was flowing through the circuit. And that's how much voltage was roughly flowing through. And uh, that's how much wattage was roughly flowing through. So now, um, if I connect this back up, you'll see that the voltage will be dropping slightly. I'll just put this back on here. So anode to the anode and cathode to the cathode Oops. so you can see here 2.75, and it's dropping, the voltage is dropping if I take this off you'll see that the voltage should start building back, climbing back up again. You see? That's the voltage dip. Climbs back up again. And under load, it sinks like that. And it'll keep going down. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to monitor the voltage. Uh, sorry, not the voltage, the heat. And we'll see what happens. So you can see that there's the voltage. 
and now let's see what happens with the heat of this resistor. It's rising and rising and rising and in the meantime it's actually burning off energy from the cell and um, yeah converting that electrical energy into heat so you can see it's climbing for 42 okay 42 43 degrees Celsius and the voltage has stopped well the voltage is dropping very slowly now yeah so there you go it feels very hot now if I take this off the voltage will spring back up again it's almost like elastic you see it, it's springing back up on its own anyway so that's just a little bit about um, power resistors how you can use them, uh, where they're used, and just a few calculations about, um, you know, how you can use them and what to expect. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching. Bye!